Good morning, everyone. If you would like to stand with us, we're going to sing a few songs. Feel free to worship with us. We'll have the words on the screen for you. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is the mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. Take so when I fight. There's nothing impossible for you.
Thank you, Jesus. God, we invite your presence to make a difference in our hearts this morning. Sing it to the one who gives us faith this morning. God, we're grateful this morning that we could grab a hold of peace that you offer. As it says in the book of James, that blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. 
And whatever storms we may be facing today, God, we just want to thank you for them. Because without the storms in our life, God, God, we would be spiritually barren. God, that you use the hard things in our life to grow us. As that analogy that talks about a butterfly coming out of its cocoon, that the struggle is what puts the blood into the wings, right? Maybe we've heard that before. And God, today, we see that you use each storm that we face to deepen our character, to smooth out the rough edges, to give us the perspective that we can't do it on our own, but we need you. And so this morning, we just declare that nothing is wasted. But in the same breath, we realize that peace is something that we can have even while we're in the midst of our struggles. And so when we sing a song like this, we just don't want to just sing it. But we want to remind our hearts that it's you, God, who is the author of our days. The season that we stand in right now, God, you are over that season. And you are working. And we don't want to fight you on that. It's so easy to. And so this morning, God, we look to you. We humble our hearts. It's easy to walk in here all, I'm in control of my life. It's all up to me. But man, when we come in this room, we're reminded, no, it's, it's up to you. And there are things you want to do. And the things you're trying to communicate to us. And we just want to be open to what those things are. So we thank you for that peace, God, that you offer here this morning. sing this. Let's declare this in this place this morning. Sing it all the earth. In all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Sing 
sing all the earth. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will say, Great are you, Lord. And all the earth. Just focus on that truth. Sing great. So this morning, God, we fix our eyes on your greatness, on your redemption, on what you're doing, on what you've done for us, that if we've walked in this room, that you long to be close to us. If we're watching online, God, you long to be close. Wherever we're standing, God, we just want to invite you into this service, into what you're going to be teaching our hearts here this morning. May we, may we be receptive, we pray. We thank you, God. We pray this in your name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen, amen. Hey, guys, before you sit down, turn around and say hi to somebody around you. Good morning, good morning. How we doing this morning? Awesome, awesome. So glad you guys are with us this morning. My name is Joe. I'm one of the pastors on staff. If it's your first time here, we haven't met before. I'd love to meet you after service. Can we give it up for first time guests that we have in the room this morning? Or if you're joining us online, so happy that you're with us. Um, if that's you, a couple things I'd love for you to grab. First, uh, at the info desk where you came in, there's this awesome gift bag. We'd love for you to pick it up. Come find me or one of the greeters, and we'll make sure you take this home. There's some info in there about who we are as a church. There's a book that we love, and then there's also a mug with some goodies that we'd love for you to take home and enjoy. We'd love it for you to download our app. It's probably the best way for you to find everything that we have going on here, calendar, sign-ups, devos. And on there, on that front page, is a connection card. So if you hit that and fill it out, someone will reach out to you this week via email to get to know you a little bit. So it's the best way for you to get connected by filling one of those out. So we'd love for you to do that. In the back of the room is our offering. So if you want to give this morning, you can give a couple different ways. You can drop that off in that black lockbox that you passed on your way in. You can 
give online by going to livingwordli.org slash giving or hitting the give button on the app or mailing that into 328 Hoffman Lane in Hop Hog. Ladies, stay tuned because we have a women's event coming in the month of February, so we will let you know what that is and the details for that, so stay tuned on more details. And then, gentlemen, on Tuesday the 13th at 7 o'clock is our men's group, so we'd love to see you out there. It's going to be awesome. If you've never been, come on out. 7 o'clock, we'll have dinner, food for you guys. We'll get together in small groups and just dig into each other's lives. It's going to be awesome, and we'll be going through that book the men that we need. If you haven't picked it up, you want to, I can send you the Amazon link to it. It's an awesome book, and uh, it's been really blessing the men of this church. So guys, we'd love to see you there. Our Soundview baby bottle collection is wrapping up today, so if you brought that to church, make sure you drop it off with Laura. She has a little setup down the hallway for that, and uh, we'd love that we're doing that here at um, Living Word. We're supporting this ministry, and so if you brought that baby bottle with you, make sure you return it today. Our grocery outreach ministry is in need of a bit of a restock. So every week they just basically get cleaned out uh, by going out to the community and bringing free groceries. And so if you want to give towards that, you can bring groceries with you on Sunday mornings. Things like rice and beans, canned goods, uh, cereal, pasta and sauce, peanut butter and jelly, paper goods, things like that. Or you can give financially towards that ministry as well. Down the hallway, we have an amazing kids ministry and nursery. So want to let you know what's going on down there. Our staff just really loves pouring into those kids. And so their uh, verse for the month is, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. And so that's what your kids are learning and talking about right now as we speak. So if you've never sent your kid down there and you're interested in that, we'd love to get them sent down there. And if you choose to keep your child in service, we just ask that if they get noisy, you take them out into the hallway just to keep this environment as distraction-free as possible. Uh, next week, there's no 7 p.m. service. So if you're normally a 7 p.m. person or you know someone who is, next week is Super Bowl Sunday, so there won't be a 7 o'clock. So make sure you're here for one of our morning services, and then the following week we'll be right back to our normal schedules. want to highlight our volunteers of the week, Joe and Allie Damon. Can we give it up for Joe and Allie? <laughs> Joe and Allie serve. Uh, Joe serves on our parking team, and Allie serves down at the nursery taking care of our kids. So, uh, so awesome. Let them know how awesome they are if you see them this week. And then I want to let you know, as always, our Build Together Fund is out in the hallway. If you want to give towards that, you could give in person. There's a lockbox out on a table. Or you can give online through the app or through the website. And we'd be so blessed by that, supporting what we have going on with that building. So, yeah. Uh, at this time, we're going to continue our series in the Book of Mark. Really excited about what's been going on. So I'm going to invite Doug on out. Hey, thanks, Joe. Hi, guys. Good morning. Great to see you today. So two things to let you know about before we get into the message today. First off... Uh, starting two weeks from today, as I said last week, we're going to start having our kids, not the nursery, but our four-year-olds up through sixth grade in the service for the worship. We think that that's really important. We think it's something that's maybe been missing. And so we just think for them to be able to come in and experience what worship is, sit with their parents, see their parents worship, it's going to be something that God uses in their life uh, to not only grow them, but I think it'll grow us too as a church. I think it's a really cool thing when we can get the generations together worshiping God. So here's how this is going to work. Uh, not next week, but the week after. When you come in, you'll just come down toward the auditorium with your kids, and our, our kids staff will be right at the front of the auditorium entrance, and you'll be able to check your kids in right there. If you're a parent, you know how this works. You get a sticker, they get a sticker. You come on in, you guys will worship together, and then as uh, the worship ends, Andrew will dismiss the kids, they'll head to the back, Joey and the team will be right there, they'll have a printed out list of everyone that's checked in, we'll make sure all the kids that checked in go with them, if, some, if a kid's like, I don't want to leave mom, I want to sit in the service, then one of our team will come over and just check in and make sure they're staying, and if someone that didn't get to check in, like if one of the kids is like, yo, 20 kids just ran in the back, I want to go, and, and, and so if he comes over, he or she, they'll just have to be checked in right there on the spot, then our security team will escort them down to the gym, and it'll be great. They'll be able to get to their small groups, their large group teaching, and their crafts and games. So just think that's a cool thing we're going to try uh, in a few weeks. Second thing that I need some help with is this. Uh, we are starting a brand new team here at Living Word Church called the First Impressions Team. And we're a portable church, obviously, and we think this room feels a lot like home, but the parking lot and the hallway, not so much. And we think it's important to be as effective as we possibly can to just brighten that up. And so we're asking if some of you guys can help us out with that. The early service are the early side of this, and hopefully some of you guys will be the later on side of this. So we're inviting um, some people to come and be a part of that team at 8.30 on Sunday mornings to get here. And if you dropped off your kids and you started to go down that wing, you started, that's like phase one. 
of just setting up some curtains and some cool stuff to kind of just make the hallway feel alive. We've got some great ideas and a team that even just before service was meeting to figure out how do we just make it feel like home throughout the whole building. So if you're uh, coming to the 1130 service, your role in this would be just staying after probably like 15 to 20 minutes at most and just helping us undo what we do. Take the curtains down, fold them up, put away some nice little, you know, plants we might have throughout the building, bring in some signs from outside. Those kinds of things would be huge. And it's really going to help us be effective as we're portable for uh, the, you know, a little bit longer till we have our church home. So um, on the app is a sign up for the First Impressions team. And we would just so be thrilled if you would be a part of it and help us out. Again, we're going to rotate you. It will be just 15 or 20 minutes after service. And it will be just a huge blessing to the people that come and also to our team that's taking care of a lot of other things. So sign up if you're willing. We'll get you on a rotation. We'll train you up. It'll be awesome. And we believe that God's going to continue to use us in powerful ways. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for what you're doing here at Living Word. Thank you for this awesome church family. Thank you, God, for your presence and what you want to say to us today. So speak to us, we pray, in your name. Amen. So when I was in fifth grade, I played baseball right near the old church. If you were a part of the old church, you know that the Browns Road Park is. And I used to be in that little league over there. And I was going to be the next center fielder for the Mets. That was my destiny. I was a really unique player because my dad and my uncle... Uh, when I was little, thought, we're going to make Doug a switch hitter. This is going to be awesome. So from the time I could swing anything, they, they taught me to swing lefty, even though I'm naturally righty. The problem is they never taught me to swing righty. <laughs> so I'm only a lefty swinger. But so I'm a really unique player, man. I bat lefty, throw righty. I mean, what's better than that? And so I'm all excited about my future in the MLB. And uh, then I met him, Lenny the Rat Tail. Lenny the Rat Tail was a little league pitcher, and he was a foot to two feet taller than all the rest of us. And when he would warm up, you couldn't even see the ball. It was flying by. And we called him Lenny the Rat Tail because I have a picture here. He had one of these. And so the 80s thing is coming back, by the way. That's okay, but that should never come back, okay? I'm scarred. But anyway, Lenny the Rat Tail, uh, my buddy Paul Seafron was in the same league, and Lenny the Rat Tail had hit Paul Seafron with a pitch. And then my buddy Steve Jensen was on my team, and he was batting before me, and Lenny the Rat Tail hit Steve with a pitch. So I get up to the plate, and if you're expecting me to talk about how I then hit a home run or something, you need to find a church with a more athletic pastor because I literally just stood there with my eyes closed, praying with the bat on my shoulder, Jesus, don't let me get hit by Lenny the Rat Tail. Man, we all face things that we're terrified of, don't we? And today I want to talk with you about a few of those things that every one of us faces. And so we have some questions to ask, and we're going to ask, as we face these things, what can Jesus do? And so first off, when we face storms, what can Jesus do? Secondly, when we face the devil, what can Jesus do? Thirdly, when we face sickness, what can Jesus do? And question four is really important too. How do we navigate the times Jesus doesn't do what we want with these things? So this is going to hit everybody. We're we're all in on this one, right? Either we're facing one of those things or we're disappointed with the outcome of something in our past, a time we asked God to do something and it didn't go the way that we hoped. And so we're going to work our way through these questions here today. And if you're not a follower of Jesus, you face scary things too, don't you? What would it look like to invite Jesus into that fear? What would it look to... Say, Jesus, I need you in my life. I need you to help me navigate these things, or I need your help with these areas of my life. And so, as we've been saying, Mark wrote the book of Mark, and the theme of the book of Mark is Jesus the servant. And Peter was a good friend of Mark, and so everything that Mark writes about Jesus, he's taking from Peter's eyewitness accounts of what Jesus did or lived. So let's get to question one. When we face storms, what can Jesus do? Mark 4.35 says, The day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Does this feel like anybody's life right now? Like, you're not sitting in a nice little fishing boat with your fishing line over the side, with your feet up, drinking a Diet Dr. Pepper. Like, you're not even on a nice speedboat cruising along through life. You're not even in rapids that you chose to be in. I have a picture here of my family years ago in some rapids. There's myself on the left and my dad on the right, my brother-in-law, sister, my mom, my wife, and then we had a guide in the back of the boat there, class five rapids in Colorado. And you're like, 
Yeah, but you paid to be in those rapids, Doug. You have a helmet. You have paddles. You have a guide with you. Some of you are like, I didn't want to be in these rapids. I didn't want these waves crashing down on me. Yet that's where some of us find ourselves, the wave of financial pressure blasting down on us, the wave of sickness, the wave of loss just trying to destroy and obliterate our boat. Verse 38, Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. I just want to say, I don't have Jesus' sleeping skills. That's not how it goes for me. As I've said in the past, I often have a a date with anxiety and stress at about 5 a.m. every morning. It just seems to pop up. And I'm up, and I'm not asleep like Jesus is asleep. I just love, though, that Jesus is really not impacted by the storm by a bit. Right? Like, why, though? Why? Well, let me ruin the rest of the story. You see, Jesus knows that he has authority and power over the storm. And so you can sleep when you have authority and power over the storm. Everybody look at me real quick, and I'm preaching to my own soul here. You can sleep when you know the one who has power and authority over the storm. You can rest then. And I'm, again, I'm preaching that to my soul at 5 a.m. this morning, that he's got it, and he's got me, and he's bigger than these waves that are scary. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care? Everybody say, don't you care? Don't you care if we drown? Some of you are saying that. Some of you said those words this week. God, don't you care that I'm financially in trouble? Don't you care that I'm still sick? Don't you care that my heart is broken? Like, where are you, God? Don't you care? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. When we face storms, what can Jesus do? Well, he can still them with just a word. It goes on in verse 40. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And here's the thing. I know a lot of you guys, and I think most of us, if I asked you the theological question, do you believe that Jesus can still the waves? You would say, yes, theologically, I believe that. The problem is, I think we go, yes, I believe he can, but I'm just not sure that he will. And there could be times when it really feels like he doesn't. And the truth is, is our faith needs to be deepened because if as long as we say, God, I will follow you and trust you as long as you still the waves, it really needs to turn into a, God, even if you didn't still those waves, I still trust you. I still trust that there's some purpose to this storm as long as they might break down over my boat. Jesus does have power over the storms in our lives. Verse 41, they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So it's like a huge, mind-blowing moment for them. And we have to be mindful of these poor guys. Once in a while, I feel bad for the disciples because the Bible's a little tough on them sometimes, and we can be a little tough on them. But like, just put yourself in their position, okay? Like you're out on the ocean this week, and you're out there with some friends, and one of your friends falls asleep in the back of the boat, and all of a sudden, this horrific storm kicks up, and the waves are crashing, and you're afraid for your life, and your buddy who's asleep in the back, just, just put yourself there. He just gets up, and he goes to the, the, the bow of the boat, and he stands up, and he just says, be still, right? Like, I mean, this is what they're experiencing, and then everything actually still. They're just still discovering who this Jesus is, Right? And we saw in week one, he's not just a man, he's not just a prophet, he's not just a miracle worker, he's not just a great teacher, he's God in the flesh, but these guys are still trying to wrap their heads around this. So when we face the storms, what can Jesus do? He can still them with just a word. Question two, when we face the devil, what can Jesus do? Mark 5, 1, here we go. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit, so this is a demonic spirit, came from the tombs to meet him. Now, some of you guys are super skeptical about this. You're like, come on, Doug. I've seen movies like this. This isn't real life. Like, there's not like demons and devils and like, this isn't real, right? I just want to let you know today, and I'm not going to get into it. You can ask me later if you want to, but I've been in the room when this stuff is real. Like, I've seen this stuff. I'm telling you firsthand witness many times in my life and ministry that this stuff is real. Now, we can go the other extreme and think that the devil's behind every doorway and every issue, right? We got to be careful we don't go that way either. So there's this balance, but don't be blind to the fact that the devil is real and he wants to torment people like he is this man. Verse 3, this man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had been uh, often chained hand and foot, but he tore 
the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. This is an imprisoned and tortured soul. And maybe some of you guys are reading this going like, come on. It sounds like he's got like supernatural superhero strength here. I'm just telling you, this is real. I've seen it. I have a cop friend who became a pastor who has seen it like unreal. I, can't, I won't get into the story today, but I'm just telling you this is real. And so you're going, Doug, why are you telling me this is real? A few reasons. First off, I want you to take this seriously. Secondly, I want you to know this story actually happened. And third, this is really important. So you don't open your heart to the devil working in your life. Like There's doorways, people, right? What are some of the doorways? What, you know, things like tarot cards and you know different readings we might get witchcraft fortune telling astrology psychics but but like even like the movies we watch the music that we listen to like we got to be careful what we're letting in listen the deep sin that we we keep hidden that's a doorway every look at me real quick this is so important some of you are here today to hear this trauma the trauma you've walked through in your life i'm going to tell you right now that the darkest times of my life was right after trauma times I almost gave up right after trauma and that's a doorway that the enemy loves to bust in and kick you when you're down so what do we do well let's be really careful about what doors we open let's be really careful about the things we're allowing in and I think we get a sense I don't know how how it works for you I know how it works for me if I get around something and I start to feel like there's something more than just a, a movie here there's something more than just a song there's something even with a person you can sometimes sense like Man, something's going on here. And for me anyway, I started to get this feeling literally physically in my stomach like something's off. I would just say, go with that, right? Like an hour and a half, two-hour movie, that's worth a doorway into your life? A song, an album, a, a certain artist, that's worth a doorway into your life where the enemy can bring torment, right? Or again, even just that deep hidden sin that we like to think nobody knows about and it's really innocent. Like, bring it to the Lord, our trauma. Bring it to Jesus. We're going to talk about that in a few weeks. Some of us are half healed here in the room, and God desires for us to be whole healed, right? And so bring our stuff to him. Let's keep going. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. Okay, so what just happened? This guy who's been tormented by the devil runs and falls at the feet of Jesus. What stands out about this is what he didn't do. Okay? He didn't tackle Jesus. He didn't grab Jesus around the throat. He didn't jump and Superman punch Jesus and try and knock him down. He fell on his knees in front of Jesus. Do you know what that tells me? That our God is a lot stronger than the devil. He's so much bigger. And I, I listen, Doug Jansen versus Satan is in trouble, but Jesus and Doug Jansen is a different story. And the same is true for you. And so we see God's power at work, verse 7, he shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. This demon knows exactly who Jesus is. Verse 8, for Jesus had said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. So Jesus isn't dealing with just one demon. The word legion represented in the Roman army 6,000 soldiers. So this man is tormented by 6,000 demons. And listen, clearly Jesus is calling the shots in this scenario, right? So like when he asks the name, he's not like asking for help. Like, like if the guy is like, my name's Bob. You're like, oh great, Bob in Jesus' name or my name, get out. You know what I mean? Like why did he ask his name? And why is it important that we know there were 6,000 demons? He asked so we could see how much authority he has over 6,000 demons in one shot. He was showing the disciples, this is what I could do. I want you to know there's 6,000 in there. 2,000 later, 2,000 years later, I want Living Word Church to know there's 6,000 of them. I dealt with them like that. That's how big our great God is in comparison. He begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Now, the ladies in the room are thinking, those poor pigs. The guys in the room are thinking, what a waste of bacon, 
Like, I have no doubt that's what you guys are thinking, right? And there were 6,000 of them, so that's 6,000 sources of bacon, right? Question two, when we face the devil, what can Jesus do? He can free us. He could free us. Those telling the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. I remember my father-in-law years ago saying, isn't it weird that the guy who was demon-possessed and breaking through chains and cutting himself with rocks is now in his right mind, and now the people are afraid? goes on. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and told them about the bacon, I mean pigs as well. (laughs) Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. How messed up is this? Like here's the guy who just set free the guy who's been tormenting your region and you want him to leave? Verse 18. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Yeah, because God just transformed his life. He's going, Jesus, don't leave me. You just, you just set me free, right? And I understand that sentiment. My wife, Kelly, had a really big surgery uh, a few months ago, and um, the doctor just told us the other day that the only bigger surgery a person can have is open heart surgery. Like what she went through was really substantial. And so this doctor had done an amazing thing that we pray will change the course of Kelly's health and life. And we were talking to him at the last appointment, and he, he's just a sweet, kind, compassionate man, gave Kelly a big hug, said the surgery was successful, and um, as we left, we got out into the car, and Kelly and I looked at each other, and, and I mean, we've known this guy pretty well for, you know, six months now, and he's helped us and changed our life, and we kind of looked at each other like, like we're going to see him again, right? Like, like, that was like the last appointment, like, you know, it's like, Super Bowl my place, you know, 4th of July your place, like, we're going to, you know, and, and like, imagine what this guy must be feeling. Like, Jesus just totally gave him his life back. Jesus, can I go with you? Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. Everybody say, tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he's had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. Jesus had a mission for this man. The man wanted to leave and, or, or go with Jesus. Jesus said, no, 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 you just stay and tell people how much I've done for you. Now, last Sunday... We talked a lot about sharing our faith, bright, shining lights, um, getting the seed out there and allowing God to make it grow, right? We talked a lot about that. And I told you last week that this week I will give you a little, a little tip on how to share your faith. And it jumps right out of the story here. You see, these people, uh, this guy now had an opportunity to reach these people and impact them. And, and what did Jesus tell them to do? He said, go tell them how I changed your life. Go and tell them how I changed your life. But but what if they ask a question about science? Tell them how I changed your life. But what if they ask a question about the Bible and they have some objection? Well, there's great answers for all that stuff. But if you're not well-versed in that, somebody else at church is. Somebody else can handle that question. But you know what? Bring them to church. We'll figure that out. Or have coffee with them. We'll figure that out. But, But you just tell them how I changed your life. Sometimes it's just that little thing. And we're quiet. And we don't share our faith because we think we have to know everything. Or because we think we're imperfect. Because we think we won't have every answer. My son Cade was telling us this past week, he's working at the most holy of holies, Chick-fil-A. And uh, he's over there doing his thing. And one of his coworkers said, so Cade, what are you going to do with your life? And he said, oh, I might be a pastor. I'm studying to be a pastor. And so um, she said, oh, so does that mean you can't get married? And he said, oh, no, no. He said, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian. And she said, well, I'm Catholic. What's the difference? And he said, well, he said, as Christians, that we just believe that Jesus completely saves us. It seems like as I talk with Catholics, it seems like they think like they have to do the saving. And the girl looked back at him and just said, you just unlocked something in my brain right there. And that was it. One little line. Kate didn't go into science and history and geology and archaeology. And and there's good answers with all that stuff. And if you know it, you know it. Go for it. Be used. But Kate had his little shot to fire and he took it, right? Just tell him what you got. Tell him what Jesus has done powerful. Let's keep going. When we face the devil, Jesus can free us. Question three, when we face sickness, what can Jesus do? Verse 21, when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she'll be healed and live. So here is Jesus surrounded by the crowd, and Jairus makes this desperate plea. It says in verse 24, Jesus 
went with him. But that's not all that's going on here. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. And many of us can relate to that. It seems like the more people I talk to that are sick or have a loved one that's sick, it's like, yeah, we've gone to everybody and we just can't find an answer. So frustrating. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. So this woman is desperate. And my wife, as I was talking about this message, she said, you know, if there's a person in the Bible that I relate to most, it's this lady. Because she's been chronically ill for 16 years now, and doctor, doctor, and surgery, and this, and that, and this, and that. And God's been good. Seven years ago, yesterday, God spared Kelly's life. And so we have a great, powerful, wonderful work in God, and yet, isn't there that tension of, yeah, but what about when it doesn't go the way that I want it to? We're going to get to that. So she reaches out and touches his cloak. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you asked who touched me? They're so kind, aren't they? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. What can Jesus do when we're sick, when we face sickness? We find that Jesus has the ability to heal and to do the impossible and to overcome disease and sickness in the room. And you know what? There are people here in the room and online who 100% can say, I've seen God do a miracle. In fact, uh, three years ago yesterday, I was released from Stony Brook after being in there. I'm not going to tell my whole story here. You can, I'll bore you with it later if you want to hear it. But um, I was released from Stony Brook after many months and almost dying. And if we didn't have a miracle working God, then three years, one month, and 11 days ago, I would have died. Like, that's just the flat out truth. And the only reason I even remembered that yesterday was the three-year anniversary was because a nurse friend who was one of my youth group kids when I was first a youth pastor, her Facebook memory popped up of the video of me being released and she wrote to me and said, the only way you're alive is because God kept you alive. She says, I'm a nurse. I work with ECMO life support and vents all the time. She says, you shouldn't be here. It was God. And so God is a huge, amazing, wonderful, powerful, working God. And many of you here watching online could say that God is a healer and he's amazing. And so we bring him our requests and we bring him our pain and we bring him our suffering. And I, I think I'm supposed to today just give some of us hope again for this. Like give some of us a passion again to pursue Jesus and to bring him our pain and to bring him our suffering and to bring him our heartache and to look to him. And yet, a part of my job is also to pastor those of us who have asked for healing and asked for breakthrough and asked the waves to stop crashing and yet they still continue on, right? Because what do we do when we don't get what we want. How do we navigate the times Jesus doesn't do what we want? Let's keep going. Verse 35, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher any more? So now some of you guys know the end of the story. You know where this is going. But sometimes we don't pause and think about poor Jairus here hearing his daughter die. Like, Jesus, why didn't you save her? Why didn't you just change it? Why did you allow, why'd you wait? Why'd you give the attention to that woman? who came and fought her way through the crowd. Why, if we just hurried a little bit more, why did you wait? Well, how do we navigate the times Jesus doesn't do what we want? I think a few things. First off, we, we remember we live in a broken world, right? And that's not an excuse. It's just true. There was no cancer and car accidents in the Garden of Eden. Or sin entered the picture. And so now we live in a broken world. We also remember that God has a will, right? And let me remind you of a couple of of things here, because God has a will, we don't condemn others or ourselves if something doesn't go the way that we quite wanted it to, right? Like if we pray and we ask God for something and then we don't get that thing, we don't decide, well, it was, it's my fault and, or it's their fault, or, right? Like Jesus said that if we have um, faith the size of a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed, that we can move a mountain. And I'm looking through the crowd and I know many of you guys, I know the prayers you've prayed for loved ones, and I don't see people who pray with mustard seed faith. I, I see people who pray with mountain-moving faith, like mountain-sized faith to move the mountain. So if you've been beating yourself up or condemning yourself, it's time to stop that because we do have a God that has a will. Also, God has a time frame. I don't know about you, but there have been times I've asked God to do something, and it hasn't happened until much later. Let's keep going. Over 
Hearing what they said, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with her, him and went, in there, uh, and, excuse me, and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this, and they told him to give her something to eat. And we see this amazing story of healing. But with that, again, I, I, I pastor you to believe for the impossible, and I also pastor us on the other side of some brokenness, don't I? There's some of us that are here that are hurting and wounded because the truth is that God has a will and God has a time frame, and there are times that God says no. And listen, it's not a cold no. It's not an indifferent no. It's a no, I've got a different plan. It's a no, there's a, another good that I'm going to bring out of this. It's a no, you don't see the whole picture. And maybe you're saying, but Doug, where do you see that in the scripture today? Like all we've seen today is Jesus healing and delivering. And where do you see Jesus saying no to anybody? Well, we actually saw it a few weeks ago. John the Baptist was put in prison. And Jesus is out healing people and amazing things are happening. And, and John's like, why am I stuck in prison? Where, where's this Jesus guy? And he actually sends some of his disciples to go to Jesus and, and ask Jesus a really pointed question. And here was the question. Are you Jesus or not? Are you the Messiah or not? Are you God or not? Jesus sends back an answer, and he says, tell them what you see. The blind are seeing, the deaf are hearing, the dead are raised. In other words, he's saying, John, you're in prison, and I'm God. Both are true. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes he says wait. We live in a broken world. But there's something I need you to see here that's so important. You see, the apostle Paul once asked God to remove a thorn you kind of use this illustration. You can imagine, we've all probably gotten a thorn in our finger at a certain time. Not fun, but imagine that thorn never was pulled out. I don't know about you, but I have a tiny little splinter. I'm a little baby, and I need my wife to come and get the tweezers, and I look away, and she does her little thing there. But imagine like a big thorn, I know, very manly, a big thorn in your finger, and you're like, I need this out. I, 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 that's all I can think about, Right? And he goes to God, and we don't know whether the thorn was sickness. We don't know if it was a person. We don't know if it was a satanic attack. We don't know. But the answer is, my grace is enough. My grace is enough. So everyone look at me, because I think this is why many of you are here today, okay? This is so important. When you walk away from a time of prayer with Jesus, you do not leave empty-handed, even if you don't get what you want. Why? Because we go, just imagine Paul, Jesus heal me, right? Or Jesus free me. And he says no, and it feels kind of like Paul goes like this and closes his hand, he walks away. But, but what we forget is God pours grace all over Paul. Paul, the thorn's going to stay, but man, I am going to pour out my grace on you. You don't leave empty-handed. Ever, never, never. Even if you don't get what you want. So, what have we seen here today? We've seen that Jesus has power and authority over storms, demons, and disease. And my job today is to get you and I to go, oh God, free me from my storm. Free me from this demonic attack. Free me from this disease. Touch me, God. I'm praying with all faith that my wife will be healed. I believe with all my heart the day is coming that Kelly Rose Jansen I'm not going to tell you her age, is going to be touched miraculously by God. And that is the expectation that we are to walk in. We're to, we're to go with expectation of faith. We're going to say, Lord, do it. God, touch her. Do the impossible. Bring this about. Your will, your time frame, but God, come on, let's go. Do mighty things. And there's storms in our lives. We need to go with tenacity. And there's provision that we need, and there's demonic oppression that we need to be freed from, and there's trauma that we need healing from. But the beautiful thing is, is 
Even as we look back and maybe, you know, I look back at my mom who passed away from cancer and you look back on these different people that we've lost. And I told you guys a few weeks ago that that there was a week in January, I think it was, where four members of our staff lost a loved one. It's just like the pain of that, the shock of that. You look back and you just have to know that a loving God is still walking with you. And you have to know, listen, that though you and I walk through tons of storms in our lives, Jesus took the storm we couldn't take, right? Jesus took the storm called the cross. Jesus took the storm called the Father's wrath on him instead of you. Jesus took the storm of humiliation, though he was sinless. Jesus took the storm of his Father turning his back on him, that you and I would be saved and forgiven. And so you have so much in Jesus because he's got it power and authority over storms and diseases and the devil. But even if we don't get the answer we want, even if it's a wait or even if it's a no, there's always the gift of grace. Like there's a gift of healing, a gift of provision, a gift of reconciliation. There's a gift of grace that God pours out on you and me. You never go away empty-handed. If you're not a father of Jesus, I'd love for you to put your trust in him. I'd love for you to ask him to be your savior. He loves you so much. He wants you to know him. He wants you to love him. He wants you to be close to him. He wants you to enjoy a relationship with him. And there's truly nothing like it. And he died so that you could have all that. Church today, just know the authority and the power of Jesus. Know his work in our lives. We are to pray with hope. I believe some of our hope is to be revived today. I I think some of us have shelved some things and just thought this is just the way it's always going to be. No, no, no. We go until we hear no, right? We go to him until we hear no, my grace is enough. I believe as a church we should be seeing tons more of God showing up and doing the miraculous. Let's believe him for that and ask him for that. Let's pray together. Would you guys stand with me? Let's do something different today. Can you stand with me, but don't get distracted. Just stand up. Sometimes we've got to bust out of the routine a little. Because I, I want this to be not just like, and I hope it's never just let's close in prayer. I hate that. Let's, 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 let's always pray on what we've heard and digest it, and I believe God's going to meet us. But, but let's even take that up a few notches here today. And so every eye closed, including mine. But I feel like a, like, like a little bit of a reaction point is important. A little bit of an action step right now is important. Because I know that God responds to faith. And so with every eye closed, including mine, if you're in a storm right now, would you just raise your hand? And can I just pray over you? Jesus, how we need you, God. You know every hand up and you know every storm. And you know even those that don't want to raise their hands right now, God. God, I get it. I understand the storms can be so overwhelming. They can be so scary. Lord, I just cry out to you, Lord, because you've told me to come and you've told us to come and to ask and with expectation. You've told us to come with faith, with confidence before your throne. So, Lord, I just pray you will speak to these storms, Lord God. I know you have a will and I know you have a time frame, God. But there are many who with their arms up right now, the storm has just gone on and on, or it's storm to the next storm to the next storm. God, would you speak to the storms? Lord, in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough, Lord God. Breakthrough, Lord. There's no name like Jesus. We lift your name up high over every storm. God, you're asleep in the boat because you have authority and power. And we can sleep because you have authority and power. We can rest because you have authority and power. So we bring you our storms. Would you bring them your storm right now? Just name it. Jesus, speak, Lord. Put your hand down. Would you raise your hand now if you just feel like, man, the enemy's like breathing down your neck. It's been like attack after attack. You feel like the devil's just whispering in your ear. Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus, break through, Lord, everything. It's not of you be silenced, Lord Jesus. Every voice that's not of God be silenced, Lord. I pray even, Lord, that you would just break off relationships that are not of you and open doors, Lord God. I pray that we'll be so careful about what we open ourselves up to. I pray that you'll destroy the influence of the enemy in our lives, God. Be that witchcraft, Lord Jesus. Be that uh, psychics and astrology. And God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that'll be broken today, Lord. That those doors will be shut in the name of Jesus, even in our past, Lord. God, the movies and the music that we listen to, God. God, let let, let us have a sense of what is of you and what is not. 
What are doorways? God, I pray deep hidden sin, Lord. God, we want to bring it to you. Would you bring it to him right now? Would you name it? Maybe something you've never told anybody, but you would just bring it to Jesus right now, that that doorway would be shut. And God, our trauma, Lord, we bring to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I just, no life will be taken in this room. No one will take their life in this room in Jesus' name. If you're there right now, know the love of God for you. Know the value he places on your life. To get on a cross and die in your place, to be beaten and spit upon, that you would be his. You are valued. Don't you dare take your life. Several weeks ago, God woke me up about a dead sleep that I was just to tell you, stop cutting. If anyone in this place is cutting yourself, stop that you're loved and you're valued that do not punish yourself jesus was punished in his body so that you wouldn't have to be punished in your body so you know him and you walk free of that and if you need help we're here to help but you're not to do that you be free of that it does adds no value you are valued and lord god our trauma we bring to you jesus May those doorways be shut. May we find healing in you, Lord. We need you so much, God. You can put your hand down. If you're sick, would you raise your hand up? Jesus, oh Lord, please, Holy Spirit, in this moment, God, just touch your people, Lord. Touch your people, God, like you saved my life. Like you touched me in a way I didn't deserve or didn't earn, but because of who you are, because of who I am to you, Lord, your child, God, I just pray supernatural miracles lord all over this place lord god just make a new thing happen lord by your spirit lord we don't need to manufacture anything we don't have to run around and scream and yell god we come in the mighty name of jesus and we bow at your feet and we ask for healing and breakthrough lord god we fight through the crowd in the name of jesus to get to you lord to touch your cloak lord jesus that healing would come meet us today lord meet us today we sense your presence lord Meet us today, God. Encourage some of you guys to fight through that stinking crowd. You fight your way through and get to him. Don't give up hope. Don't hold back. Don't let the crowd stop you. Don't let the things between you and him stop you. Don't let your heart being sick from hope being bashed in your life stop you. Jesus, just by your spirit, meet us today, Lord. All things tremble at your name, Jesus. All the darkness trembles at your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You put your arm down, raise your hand if you are on the other side of loss and you're looking back and you're broken and you're asking God why. And maybe you're even angry at him. Jesus, I just pray grace poured out. Grace poured out, Lord Jesus all over our lives, for all the questions, for all of the hurt, for all the things we don't have explanations for today, the grace of God. We never leave you empty-handed, God. We either get the answer we want or the grace to continue on. And so pour out that grace abundantly, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We need you so much. If you're not a follower of Jesus, would you pray with me right now? If you want to put your trust in him, would you say, Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for what you endured so that I could know you and be forgiven of my sin. Put your Holy Spirit in my life and do a new work. I thank you for this gift. In your name I pray. Amen. Hey, if you need prayer, please come up to the front. Please, please, please come up. Let us pray with you. Let us minister to you. Let us cry with you. Let us love on you and let us fight with you for breakthrough. You can come up during this song or after this last song. Our prayer team members will be up in the front. God bless you guys. We hope to see you next week.
situation today. So God, whatever we face today, we resolve to look towards you. To be reminded that you are the one who brings us through the storms of life. 
You're the one who accomplishes what you want to accomplish. But we cry out to you. We use the name of Jesus as our salvation, as our protection. as power over anything we may be facing here this morning. And all these needs that we lift up before you, God. Give us the faith to continue to walk towards you, towards what you want to accomplish in our hearts during these times. That we would be mindful of the work that you're trying to do in our life. That we would fight through our doubts, ask the tough questions, lean into it instead of distract ourselves. Man, it's so easy to do that nowadays. But the devices in our pockets, man, just really steal a lot of life. And so I pray as we leave this place, God, we will be reminded that you are for us, you are with us. That there would be genuine life change in this room. Those who are watching online, God, would be able to be feeling your touch this week, too. So, God, we thank you for what you're doing in this place, in our hearts. We close all this out in the name of Jesus this morning. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Hey, thank you guys for spending your Sunday morning here with us at Living Word Church. We love you guys. If you need prayer, feel free to continue to come up to the front to get that, have some coffee, hang out for a bit. If you're new, we'd love to meet you. And hey, we'll see you guys back next week. Have a good rest of your Sunday.